Thank you. Um, let me just make sure everyone's in here. All right. um, thank you very much. I want to thank everyone uh, for coming here today. In particular, I want to thank Mayor Petty from Worcester, um, who's with us today. I want to thank all of the healthcare professionals. Um, this marks the, the uh, five year anniversary uh, since the tragedy in Newtown. Uh, those families have spent their holidays without their sons and daughters for five years. Um, on that day in 2012, um, cities and towns all over the world, um, in all over this country, I should say, said never again. We pledge to do everything we can in our power to prevent uh, the causes of violence and to keep guns out of the wrong hands. And uh, I had uh, two years ago the opportunity uh, to be invited to the White House uh, with the President um, when he did his executive order on background checks. Um, and um, in that room were many of the parents from Newtown. Uh, in that room were many of the parents from tragedies that had happened in our country over the last 20 years. And it was, a, I don't want to say it was a powerful room, but it was a very sad room. And you could feel um, what was, you could feel the, the, the sadness from the, from, the, from the people that were there. Um, and the President did that executive order, quite honestly, to, to check uh, and to do, um, to extend background 72 hours. Um, this current White House eliminated that, that, that executive order on the same day the executive order came down with the Muslim ban. Uh, since that time, um, we have lost young people on our streets in America uh, every single day. Um, and so um, that's why we're here today. Um, many people's thoughts and prayers are with the families in the aftermath of the tragedy, but that's not enough. Uh, we need more action. As I mentioned a minute ago, in the absence of federal leadership, cities and towns are taking up the reins. We're working together across cultures, across the aisle, and across state lines. In 2014, Boston con convened the New England Regional Gun Summit in regional efforts that brought together 86 cities and towns, including Worcester, including Hartford, including Providence. This strong collaboration allowed us to address gun violence um, from every single angle. Together, we've launched massive efforts in reducing gun trafficking. We've brought responsible gun owners into the conversation, and we're asking them to help us prevent gun loss and gun theft. We're, we're sharing best practices for safe storage and transportation. And in many other cities, we offer fire alarm locks. In many of our cities, excuse me, we offer fire alarm locks to anyone who needs them. One of our biggest priorities has been to provide safety and easy ways for people to get rid of their guns that they don't need. The doctors here today can talk about what a big deal that this piece is. They can tell you how many times they've seen someone hurt or killed because there was an unsecured gun lying around the house. A lot of those patients are kids, people living with domestic abusers, people struggling with mental health and substance abuse issues. Many people need to, need to help getting firearms out of the homes and out of their lives. I'm proud to announce that in Boston and our partner cities, we're banding together to provide one more way of getting people to do that. This weekend, Boston, Hartford, Providence, and Worcester, and many others in Massachusetts towns are doing something that we've never done before. We're holding a multi-city coordinated gun buyback day tomorrow on December 16th, a day of remembrance for Newtown. It's simple and anonymous and no questions asked. If there's initiatives, Say, if this initiative saves one life, it'll be worth it. And it's my, I'd be willing to bet that this initiative will save one life because a gun will come off the street that we don't know that could have been used down the road in some type of crime or just violence in the street. We have a strong feeling that this is gonna go a lot further though. Um, Boston has, a run, has run this kind of program before and we know that it works. I would encourage anyone who's worried about a gun in their home or worried about a loved one Take advantage of this opportunity. Removing a weapon from the equation is one of the smartest things that you can do, that we can have happen. Every gun turned in is potentially a life or lives saved. The holidays can be a hard time, especially for people in vulnerable positions or state of mind. This is the time to, to step up and we're there to help you. Help us make sure that this season is a season of peace. I really want to thank our healthcare partners and, and for funding this initiative here in Boston. I want to thank Boston Children's Hospital, Mass General Hospital for Children, Mass General Pediatric Organization, Boston Medical Center. Thank you to the healthcare partners in all of our cities supporting these initiatives. 
in a moment we're going to hear um, I'm going to hand this off to Commissioner Evans but I first just want to say this far too often a week a month uh, after a tragedy the conversation quiets down and goes away we go on to a new news cycle elected officials forget the promises they made and what they were going to do uh, the push for action loses momentum not in Boston we're keeping this momentum up for the last four years protecting our community is our responsibility and it's our top priority every single day we work day in and day out to support responsible gun measures. We engage with strong partners like all of you in this room to prevent senseless violence. We never stop fighting for the city we love. Members of our public safety are here as well today. Uh, Conan Harris from Office of uh, Public Safety is with us. Kevin Sibley, our Office of Reentry. Many other folks that are here. Jeannie Mohan, Children's Hospital. We have many other people that are here with us today. Um, Nora uh, Bastion from the Boston Police Department. Um, they'll be available to talk about work that they do in preventing violence. Everyone this side of me uh, is involved in preventing violence for the most part. Um, it's in this side as well, but this side, grab any one of them. You might not know what they do for work, just grab them and talk to them about it. And they will tell you what's happening in the street because we're doing this all year round. Again, I want to thank all of our partner cities, everyone for helping us make this a season of peace. This is how we honor the people we have lost by working hard every single day and making good on the promise never again. Um, one thing before I bring Commissioner Evans up, I'm often asked by the press um, when we have a shooting, as you know, and the question is always, what are you going to do about it? Today is a day my answer is to the press, help us answer that question by getting this information out. So as you do your stories today, also use your, use your Twitter handle, use your Facebook handles, please get this information out today, what today is all about. Uh, you can do your stories and, and whatever happens there, but I want you to use your, 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 your networking to get the word out to people as well because it's important for us. This is an important, important move in what we're doing here. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce you, uh, the Commissioner of Boston Police Department, uh, Commissioner Billy Evans, um, who's going to provide more detail about the gun buyback, buy, gun buyback program that we're talking about. But also, um, as you all know, Commissioner Evans is, is, is probably the greatest commissioner in the country. Um, and he fights every day. We work every single day. So today is not a day of, of, of you know, having a press conference after somebody, somebody got killed. Today is a day we're having the press conference to avoid the press conference tomorrow. Commissioner Evans. Thank Thanks, Mr. Mayor, and thanks uh, for everyone coming, um, Mayor Worcester, um, the hospitals. Um, obviously, this is a unique gun buyback program where uh, we're bridging not only law enforcement with public health, as, as well as, uh, you know, obviously with mental health. Um, what we're trying to attack, obviously, is the street violence, as well as um, suicides by guns, which uh, often, often goes unnoticed, which is uh, quite frequently out there on the streets and across this nation. I also want to thank all the hospitals for their cooperation. I, I believe we got $17,000 uh, here. And I want to thank Mass General Hospital for Children, obviously uh, Mass General Physicians Organization, Children's Hospital, as well as BMC, for helping us this, this, in this effort. Um, you know, I think more than anything, we see it, the mayor sees it, we're out on the streets. You know, um, whether it was three weeks ago having a 16-year-old shot in the Mary Ellen McCormick development, the other night in East Boston being there and seeing a 20-year-old gun down on the streets, um, you know, we see it way too often. These are some of the guns we see out there in the streets. These are some of the guns that the officers risk their life taking off the streets. And so far this year, we have almost 700 guns off the street. Um, you know, this program will help people come forward with guns. And I always hear the fight back that this is only a fluff story. Let me tell you, when I, myself and the mayor first came into these positions, we both remember to go into Morton Street one morning on a call where a 14-year-old playing with a gun in the home killed his nine-year-old brother. And memories like that lay fresh in our mind. And so for those critics who say it's only a fluff piece, every gun we get off the street is one gun that won't end up in the hands of a young child or someone playing with a gun or someone who might be having a bad day who picks up a gun and wants to take their life. That's what we're here about today. And I want to thank everyone in joining us in this united effort to stamp out the guns. I looked at the paper yesterday and they, sent, they said since Sandy Hook 
they figure 6,500 kids under the age of 17 across this country have died. Over 30,000 have been wounded under the age of 17. Don't tell me we don't have a gun problem in this city, in this country. Those numbers, are, um, th th that's ridiculous. Um, I want to thank the community partners who helped <coughs> us in this effort. Um, we'll have eight locations in the city of Boston for people to drop off guns between the hours at 10, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, one will be the Central Assembly of God in East Boston. One will be Project Right in Roxbury. Uh, Salvation Army in, in, in the South End. St. Peter's Church in Dorchester. We'll have the Archdale development in Jamaica Plain. The Garfield development in High Park. Greater Love Tabernacle Church in Mattapan. And lastly, the Mary Ellen McCormick uh, development. So we'll have eight locations across our city. We're asking for anyone who might know of someone with a gun that they don't want or is just laying around to please come forward. We'll have gift cards worth $100. Uh, no questions asked. Uh, anonymously, they can turn in guns. We'll have police officers at those locations to make sure they're safely handled. And, and we'll handle those. Um, and, you know, uh, all, all, and, and all I ask is, um, you know, they have to be uh, guns in good working order. You know, some of the guns we get obviously are relics, but, and you also have to be a resident of the city of Boston to drop them off at that location. But please, uh, the mayor says it, we say it every day when we're out at these crime scenes. There's way too many guns on the streets. And together, working with the hospitals, working with communities around New England, we can really send a strong message that we don't want our young children injured on the streets of our city and across this nation. So thank you. Oh, sorry. I always, sorry, Mayor. Um, Mayor Petty from Worcester, uh, who also is a great partner uh, in this endeavor, I, I want to introduce him up here. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Mayor Walsh, uh, thank you for having us today. And I'm going to start where Mayor Walsh ended about how important this event here is today and getting the word out uh, about the gun buyback program. As you know, unintended, unsecured weapons lead to deadly, deadly results. And uh, so I want to thank Mayor Walsh for bringing this issue to this hype here today. Uh, you really think about it, it's not just a public safety issue. It's a public health issue. It's an educational issue. You, and you think about, there's about 35,000 fatalities in the United States by gun. About 63% of those are through suicide. And we have a gun by suicide, you don't get a second chance. Now, years ago, it used to be like drug or some other way. Someone would try to commit suicide, but you always had a second chance in most cases. And that's not the case today. We've been pretty successful in Worcester. We've been doing a gun by program since about two th 2002. We've collected over 3,400 guns. Uh, last year we had a coordinated effort. We collected 260 weapons. And this year we have 24 cities and towns that coordinate tomorrow here in Massachusetts and um, in Providence and Hartford. Uh, so this is, an impo this is important. A weapon that's left unsecured. It might not, the weapons you get tomorrow might not be for someone who's a criminal, but someone who just leaves their weapon out and just forgets about it. Now you're going to read the paper tomorrow and say, geez, I got that gun in the closet. It's been sitting there for 10 years. I'm going to return it here in Boston and whistle it tomorrow at the police station. So, uh, so this, is this is very important. Uh, just to have, prevent one kid from picking up a gun and playing with it and shooting somebody. So uh, I know Dr. Hirsch has been doing this for almost 25 years now, a gun buyback program, over 25 years, and since 2002 in Worcester. He's done a wonderful job when he asked me, um, I first became mayor, he wanted to expand to other cities and towns. He, then he started attending Mayor Walsh's New England um, program on guns, and he met a lot of chiefs, got more chiefs interested in doing this, and more mayors interested in doing this. Uh, please welcome Dr. Hirsch for a few comments. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Mike Hirsch. I'm a pediatric trauma surgeon from UMass Worcester, and uh, I am nominally the, the founder of uh, the gun buyback program that we've done there and previously co-founded one in, in Pittsburgh that's still in continuous operation since 1994. And um, 
we came upon this as a, a way really of raising public awareness about the responsibility that gun, that gun owners have to show. They have the Second Amendment right to own a weapon. We don't dispute that. But with that responsibility, with that um, right comes the responsibility to store the weapon safely. And if they can't do that for whatever reason, or they're worried about someone in their home that might have anger management issues, might have suicidal issues, uh, an inquisitive toddler roaming through their home, the safest thing is to get the unsecured weapon out of the home. And just as Mayor Walsh and Mayor Petty said, this is a public safety meets public health issue. So it's been my great fortune that at UMass, where our state medical school is, uh, there's been a big embracing of the notion that this is part of the doctor's responsibility. We have to ask our patients about whether or not they own guns and how they store the guns. And if they get asked and they answer us that we have a gun and we want to get rid of it, I wanted to find a method, and a way of giving them agency to bring that gun in. And that's what the gun buyback has represented. And it has kind of taken off, but I think the validation of uh, Mayor Walsh and Commissioner Evans adopting it this year uh, is a wonderful shot in the arm for all of us who have been working at this for a long time. We have great partners in Hartford, in New Haven, in Providence. Uh, we feel like we can also expand this even further. In San Francisco, they're doing a gun buyback at the same time as we are uh, this year. I think we're going to see this is a way, just like the DEA drug take back days where all of these unused opioid pills get brought in and bales and bales are brought in and, and disposed of. That's how I look at this. It's not saying guns are bad. It's not saying that it's wrong to own one. It's just saying that if you have an unsecured one, it's very important to, to get it either secured. And we do give out trigger locks at all of our sites. And if you can't secure it, don't want it, let's get rid of it and destroy it and not recirculate it. So I'm very appreciative of all of the support we've had. Uh, Dr. Maziakos and Dr. Courier here from uh, Mass General were the ones that kind of uh, heard a little bit of my message and then just took the ball and, and, and were, were able to get the partners in Boston that we needed. And with your help in the media, I, th I think we can really get the message out there that this is just one way of giving patients an option, citizens an option, to, to make the community safer. So I'm, I'm lastly going to just say that this all started for me in 1981. I lost my best friend in surgery training when we were both at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. Uh, John Wood uh, was shot and killed right in front of our hospital. Um, I was on the team that had to resuscitate him. And when you hold your friend's heart in your hand, it changes you. And I've been working at this since then and uh, this is a wonderful validation to his legacy and his widow, who's actually an anesthesiologist here in Massachusetts, has given us permission next year to call this the John Wood Memorial Gun Buyback Day. And I'm hoping that we will see a big, big growth just like we have this year. And I thank you all for making that happen. So thanks. Um. Thank you, Doc. That was, um, a, again, another powerful story uh, that will make a difference. So uh, I'm gonna, we're going to take questions on this topic, and then any off topic, I'm going to take you on this side so that you can talk to anyone here while we're doing both. So any, any questions on this topic for anybody? Thank the hospital for making this possible. But how much money are we talking about? Can it, does anybody have yeah. that answer? Well, no, Thank I'm uh, Dr. Masiatos, Pete Masiatos from Mass General Hospital for Children. And um, first, I want to thank the mayor and the commissioner. Mike is a, so you're going to listen to a New York accent after Mike's New York accent. I'm sorry for that. But we all have a personal story. I'm going to get to your money in a second. Hannah, unfortunately, lost a cousin at Newtown last year. She's a physician at Mass General. I break the news, which is the hardest part of my job, to the mothers of the kids that die who come to my emergency department. We asked for money from the hospitals and they didn't blink because we do feel that this is a public health problem. $17,000 was gathered from Mass General Boston Children's Hospital and Boston City Hospital. 
and Thea James at Boston, Boston Medical Center now, I trained at Boston City Hospital, uh, actually donated it out of her own funds. So the, the perception that we are not interested in doing anything about this or leaving it at the emergency rooms has stopped. And we're becoming more vocal and we're partnering with the government and with the police department and the public safety uh, venues. So I, I'm very, uh, I guess, honored to be part of this, but optimistic that this is going to impact something. I'm sorry? It's hitting much more than home, it's hitting here. So this is why we're here today. Yes. Or uh, is BPD going to use these guns to investigate them? Try to yeah, I'll let the commissioner answer that for you. Yeah, I mean, all, all, all these tests, you know, anonymous, um, you can turn them in, but they will be tested, Dan, and if they're found to relate to a murder, then, you know, we'll, we'll proceed um, and, and try to trace where the gun has been and who might be responsible. So, uh, you know, we're going to work with the DA's office on a gun that we find might be related to a serious crime. Um, and so, um, won't be complete amnesty if we find that the gun was used, obviously, in a murder. We'll do, we'll do the, uh, our due diligence to find out who's responsible. A lot of these guns, as you know, sometimes are community guns, and they'll pass through f five, ten hands. And so, uh, not necessarily the person who turns it in is the person who might have did the crime. So, we'll trace the gun to wherever, wherever it will, le will lead us. Has that happened before any previous buybacks? Uh, I'm not sure, not to my knowledge, not within the last couple of years, but, uh, you know, I just encourage people to turn them in. Um, you know, unfortunately, we find guns in playgrounds. We find guns under the wheels of cars. Um, uh, one individual recently, before it got cold, cut in his lawn. Uh, so there's plenty of guns out there that are just laying around. So we need them turned in. You know, I, I go and I speak to a lot of kids in the schools all the time, and it's sad that one of the things I talk to them about is if they're in a playground and they see a gun laying in the bush or nearby, to, to not go near it. But, it. but it's a reality because, unfortunately, there's way too many guns out there, and they end up in places where young kids can get their hands on. Well, the, m most recently, a lot of the guns we're getting these kids are stolen out of state, believe it or not. I'm seeing them coming. I, I read these reports every day. You know, yesterday they got a 13-year-old and a 23-year-old um, with a, a, a loaded 14 rounds in the chamber, uh, a gun yesterday. Uh, but when we trace these guns, they more and more seem to be stolen in house breaks out of state, believe it or not. But a lot of them also come from, obviously, Maine, New Hampshire, where the gun laws uh, um, a, a lot more laxed. And, and that's why Mayor Walsh has come out so strongly against this Bush legislation in Washington that on this concealed carry re reciprocity where we want to make it easy to get in guns, um, which, I which is sad. We're, we're seeing how many kids are dying on our streets every day. The last thing we should be doing is making it easier to possess a gun. And, and it, it, you know, we see Newtown, those statistics that I, re I just read about yesterday, are alarming that we have that many ki people killed in the U.S. Um, I every year. So, so most of them are out of, a lot of them are stolen guns, and a lot of them are straw purchases, and a lot of them are coming from the I-95 South Corridor too. So they're coming from all over, unfortunately. And that's why we need to keep Massachusetts laws as tight as we can get, because of all the states, we get the lowest gun fatality rate of any state, and that's how that's because we have good legislation and we are strict with our gun laws. And, and just to follow up on that, you know, in Boston we have 53 homicides this year, uh, but you start looking around the country, uh, cities our size and cities that are bigger than us, but the, the amount of homicides, those numbers are off the chart. And, you know, 53 is, is 53 too many here in Boston. Uh, there's no question about that. We say it all the time. But you think about, uh, of the 53, most of those are gun-related charges. Um, and if, if, you, if you don't have access to guns, now, that might be a fight still, but it's not a homicide. 
And I think that we have to continue to, to, to pull the guns off the street. And, and this has to be, this can't be just Boston and Worcester. This has to be nationwide because what's happening in Baltimore and Chicago and New York and, and Atlanta and, and LA and other places. I mean, I, we talk to the mayors all the time and uh, this is preventative. You know, it's kind of like we can prevent this, but but we need to work together and we need help on, on a national level. And this isn't against having the right to own a gun. You have the right to own a gun. I'm not looking to take that away. But this is for reasonable, responsible gun legislation. Uh, when you walk, when I walked in the room today and, and I saw I saw the, the police department putting these out on the table, I started looking. I mean, most of these guns were, were taken off the street. There's an Uzi here. You know, you have an Uzi that, that were taken off the streets. You have shotguns, shot off shotguns. I mean, these, these, these are guns that you see in a movie, a war, a war movie. These are on the streets of America. And, and until we start looking and saying, let's take a good look at this, we can blame the police for not doing their job. We can blame everyone for not doing their job. We can blame even gang members for, for, for killing each other. But they have access to guns. We got to do something about that. That's the problem. Any other questions? Um, no time. Yes. Well, what ends up happening is we get them across the state, um, you know, from people who uh, basically are just turning in old relics. Obviously, you know, if they want guns, they can, if they're out in, the Worcester, in Worcester, they can turn them in. But, you know, we have a, a we're more interested in getting our, uh, the guns off our street. We don't want people coming from out of state. We don't want everyone else's guns. Um, you know, we have a limited amount, but we're trying to make an impact in the city. So it's not a regional gun issue because we'll be getting guns uh, from people, believe it or not, that our city kids can't get their hands on. So we want to make it more of a localized program. Let me just add a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and also on the, on the regional gun summit, these cities and towns are a part of it. So, so, so if they choose to do a buyback program, they can do it in their town. We will work with them on it. Um, you know, we, we're trying to encourage all 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts, as well as the New England area, to be part of our gun summit. And, and many cities and towns are. We've had over 80 chiefs and cities involved, um, but we, we want to get more of them. And here in, here in Massachusetts, I mean, we've had Springfield at the table when we have a meeting. We have Worcester at the table. We have Lawrence at the table. We have Quincy at the table. We have Braintree at the table. A lot of these cities and towns are part of the conversation. I mean, you're not going to see a big, uh, you know, uh, illegal gun program in, in Wellesley, per se. So again, that, that's what the intention is. Yeah, they eventually get destroyed. Uh, and we've had some real powerful um, programs when we did it. We have brought some um, victim, um, you know, the mothers have come, and it's sort of powerful that we bring them to the incinerator um, uh, location and they see them burnt. And we've, we've invited some survivors of, of, of mothers who've lost their kids to violence to come see that. So these would be all, we don't want these back out in the street so they won't be resold. Uh, you know, but again, if, if people have guns and if, if they live outside the city and they wanna turn in the guns, we'll gladly take them, but we just are not gonna give them the $100 gift card. So we'll take any guns for, 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 for Saturday. Uh, but we will take all guns. We're just limiting the hundred dollars to city residents. They get the card. This weekend is a unique program, and we have a gun by right program every day. We've we never stopped it. But this weekend is 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 a program that was specifically targeting areas of of New England and around the country. So that's why we're here today to talk about it to raise the raise raise the awareness. Uh, on an average day, um, we we work on taking guns back every day. Any other? Perhaps, Dr. Hirsch, could, you don't know this, but we talked on the phone the other day. Yes, Carl, right? Yeah, yes. nice to see you. Um, <laughs> but you had, mentioned, you had mentioned different amounts in the Worcester area for, for the gun buyback. And I just wonder, insofar as we are announcing a region-wide strategy, I think it's important to differentiate. If there are differences in what a person gets in the different region, I, I just don't know. There, there are differences. All, all of the cities have come up with their own independent reimbursement schedule. Uh, in, in Worcester, we have a, a, le a less uh, uh, lucrative uh, reimbursement than Boston. Um, everybody's different. Yeah, and and I, I will, I, I just will tell you that the surveys that we've done of participants have shown that the people that come to bring their weapons in, almost uh, ninety percent say they didn't come for the reimbursement; they came for getting rid of the gun and making the community safer. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.